what will Alliance be finishing off with you? We already know that Frog and Fields at home on pretty much any champion you give him in the mid lane. Yeah, and I like this fist ban here. Quickly mentioned it could be the pick for Curb. They ban their way, don't want to deal with it at all. And as you talk about the Zix ban against Curb as well, target towards the mid lane, because Alliance know he's the guy who needs to get ahead early on for Millennium as a team to play very aggressive and get the kills. So actually they take away Lee Sin from the jungle and Morgana is removed by Millennium last of all. And Twisted Fate will be a very quick first choice here for Alliance. And really also explains the fist ban here so Curb couldn't play fist into Twisted Fate. And the thing about Twisted Fate on this patch is he's very, very, very strong. Similar due to LeBlanc, been nerfed. Her Q no longer silent, so she won't be able to dominate him as hard in the lane any longer. Which means he can actually play in pretty much any matchup. He won't be able to get kills, but he can always farm and then impact the other lanes on the map and of course get to his late game point where he is so, so strong. So he's a very safe pick. And also, you don't have to build a Fiends on Twisted Fate. You can build Morello Normicon and have enough mana with your blue card. Therefore, this patch really benefits Twisted Fate in a lot of ways. And I want to see what Kurt wants to play against it. Leaving. Jack's open though from the uh, band it's here. Gonna be gonna go Wicked. in the top lane, yeah. Renekton, a champion which as you mentioned in our last game when we saw him for Young Buck, that he's really come back into his own. Also a good pick up against that Jax. Evelyn picked up for the uh, jungle for Cotton X. He had his Lee Sin band away from him. And again, sticking to these three main junglers that yeah. we see in these So we days. could expect a Lee from Shook and then of course Renekton for Wicked. Well, if he locks it in, or maybe he wants to go for an Aurelia pick into the Jax if he feels very confident, never mind. Looks to be the Renekton. But the Jax thing here, he's gonna do, Jax is going to do more damage on 4.10 because of the Blade of Rune King now with the 8% instead of 5% on hit, the, the passive from Blade of Rune King. So the more auto attacks you do, obviously, the more damage you will do with the new item. However, his sustain is, is low compared to before. I mean, Doran's Blade has been changed. We can talk about it in-game. But still, we might see some issues for Kevin. Sustaining in the lane, especially if he goes one-on-one -on -one against Wicked, I would expect a lane swap for Millennium. Well, it will be that Renekton as you expected for uh, Wicked in the top lane. Also taking Nami in the support role here, so really avoiding the thresh both of these teams as Leona and Lucian are locked in for Millennium. Talked about how Lucian is the most played AD carry from both Creatine and Tabs from our featured matchup. And it seems like Alliance were quite happy to give that over here. And are we going to be seeing Caitlyn? We expect that you know, auto attack heavy champions are going to be becoming more yeah. and more popular in that bottom lane. And especially champions who can build either Infinity Edge as first item or Blade of the Rune King. Who don't need the Bloodthirster any longer. They don't need this early power spike from the Bloodthirster. Caitlyn is one of them. Your main focus is simply you need to dominate the lane. Taps actually talked about himself. There was a big post on Reddit where he put in some good comments about how Caitlyn, she needs to abuse the fact that once she gets a BF sword at 1550 gold in the laning phase, then she needs to dominate the lane here because her power spikes are very delayed compared to Lucian who builds Blade Rune King into Ghostblade and a very, very strong early mid game. Caitlyn, she needs Infinity Edge, she needs a Phantom Lancer or Static Shift, and then she can start scaling up towards the late game here. So we need to see how Alliance wants to play the early game. And once again, I really expect Millennium to go towards the lane swap here, dodge around the Nami Caitlyn lane and dodge around the Renekton lane with the Jax. Jungle pick also came in the final round there for Alliance as a, uh, Elise was picked up. Not really a surprise, so we've already touched on that one. So let's think about what Millennium are going to go with here for that mid lane. Of course, that's going to be Kerb going up against Twisted Fate for Froggen. So you could still play LeBong, just slightly worse in the laning phase compared to before because you don't have the silence, but you're still a very strong laner and you can still try and go for some kills here. But clearly Froggen feels like he can take the matchup and we need to see now Froggen against LeBong if you want to go Fiends anyway just to get the early magic resist. And that fact that we had earlier on, Kerb, last week, the game where he had more farm, they ended up really doing nothing exactly. apart from maybe picking up more farm was almost the highlight of that game for Millennium. But the next one against Fnatic, we saw him picking up kill after kill after kill, didn't really farm a lot, of one, just under 150 CS he had in that game overall. And that's what he's going to be looking to do here. Move around, especially when Twisted Fate is going to be doing a similar thing post 6. Was it just, it's some funny matchups here because, of course, Renekton will be beating Jax early on. But late game, still, Jax is very, very strong in late game. We always talk about how he scales up to the late game and becomes a monster. Lucian against Caitlyn. I mean, Lucian is going to be strong all around. 
where Caitlyn, she needs to abuse her power spike. She needs to get the BF Sword on the first back. She needs to get in Thin Titch and Static Shift or Phantom Dancer completed. And then she needs to get to this 4-5 item part, point in the late game where she becomes a, such a strong AD carry as well. And of course, in the mid lane, LeBlanc is going to win early, but Twisted Fate late game brings so much pressure and becomes so strong. So both teams here with some either weak or strong lanes, and then they just turn around and say we're strong in the late game instead if we're weak in the lane. Well, as we head into the match, which AD carry do you think will have the biggest impact? Tweet hashtag tabs or hashtag creatine to at LOL Esports, and we'll check out the results shortly. Our featured matchup here for this one, the AD carries Caitlyn for tabs. We've got creatine playing Lucian in this, and if we think back to the time, basically last season where we were seeing tons and tons and pretty much only Caitlyn down there in the yep. bottom lane, tabs always showed that it was an amazing Caitlyn player. And he's always very good at playing her passive and safe and pick up a lot of farm. So I think he's going to do the same thing here. So here we go then, in-game for our second match of week six. It's going to be Alliance, top of the table at 10 for two, taking on a Millennium team that, as we've said time and time again, we just don't know what to expect from them. Millennium fans and Millennium themselves will be hoping that this is the strong Millennium, the Millennium that looked incredible against Fnatic last week in London. They simply need to survive the early laning phase in top and bottom lane lane here. I do ever think, looking at the, our question to which AD carry is going to have the biggest impact, I think we're going to see Kreaton being a very aggressive, looking for fights early on with the Blades, Ruin King and Ghostblade, where we might see Taps move to this mid lane and just farm, 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 get to his late game point and then he becomes very strong and can really have an impact on the game here. So early on I definitely think it's going to be Kreaton or mid game wise, but late game then Taps. And that's the thing you can do with Caitlyn now. If you have a Twisted Fate or something that can split push, you can then divide up, divide it up on the map. So you have Blade of the Ruin King Renekton in top. You have Twisted Fate in the bottom lane, and then you just put your Caitlyn in her mid game weak points in his mid mid lane, and she just farms for like 10-15 minutes until she becomes very strong and then joins in. And that's safe a short lane in the middle. We'll see exactly how they want to play this one here. If we look down some of the summoner spells, both top laners still with the teleport. As the yeah, early ward so went down on Wicked's head. Froggen running the flash and ghost there on Twisted Fate. We've seen times where a Twisted Fate doesn't take this ghost. We've seen problems with the chase ability of that champion. And that's going to be remedied here for Froggen. So we'll see how he goes. Kerp on the other side, though, with flash and ignite. So see if he can go out all, all in, basically, onto Frog with that one. Right now, Millennium getting the wards down. are actually headed towards the enemy blue buff, which is going to be stopped stop up it. by Shook and Wicked. Perfect start for Millennium. Then they stop the blue buff. Might even go for a kill. Oh, they may do. Shook, in fact, having to flash away straight away from this one. Do have a ward there, so he's going to have that smite available to him. Let's see if he can actually get in there. They're holding the blue buff on the top side. Continex will be able to smite that one away. Nicely done for Millennium. Yeah, so perfect start for Millennium. They get the lane swap. They invade onto the blue buff, which Alliance were doing. Force the flash away. Shook should be able to pick up his own blue buff in case Alliance actually want to go for it. For now, they're just doing the red. We need to see if Millennium is sending Connex straight to his own blue buff. Well, he's doing wraiths for now with uh, the help of Kevin there. So let's see where he goes. I think he's just going to go to the, the blue red. Yeah. Red. yeah, they're already so moving in here with Wicked and Nif. It was actually very smart by Millennium again because if Nif and basically just Nif actually was there with a ward and he went over to do the blue buff by himself, it would be easy for Lions to collapse onto him. So wisely enough, they trade buffs, but just slightly ahead in the side of Connex because he got the blue buff and Shukna has to start the blue buff. And gonna leave Wicked as a bit of a partner. Nif up there as well, getting a deep ward in to have a peek around. Actually, he didn't put, or did he? I can't quite see on the minimap. Either way, was up there with them, and we see Cotton X and Kevin, and actually Jay Ree moving down towards that blue buff area. And they're actually round about the tri bush here, so this could actually end up being a little bit dangerous for Alliance. So, Alliance here with four members down this bottom lane. Could have gone for a dragon if you look back to last week where teams didn't react to it. But because Millennium knew there was a chance of an early dragon, which again is buffed in the early game, four lines, they instantly sent three members down towards this, towards this bottom lane to support the jungle and the top lane to stop a dragon in case Alliance was starting it. So overall, Millennium playing the lanes up really well and Alliance as well noticing Okay, multiple members are around here. We're not going to start any dragon. We're not going to take any chance. We're just going to go to our lanes and farm and Wicked could then teleport top lane. So the uh, bottom lane pushed up there as well, so that they could make a swift escape from that tribush area. Without that, uh, without that wave, things could have been 
slightly different on the outcome of that one. Either way, we are tied up in gold. Still very early stages, of course, and we look down the CS pretty much as expected, although Kevin doing a fantastic job here with the help of Jay Reed. 15 to 2, he's currently up there. Yeah, Lance were forced to get away from the tower because Millennium were moving down, so he's just been picking up a lot of farm. Wicked now needs to be careful because Codnex is nearby. He's got a ward, but that's not going to offer him all that much against Codnex, who's got the double buff on. Wicked could be in trouble here, does have a flash available, will use it as well to get back to his tower, but that leaves him completely vulnerable now in the top lane. No teleport, no flash, needs to back as well. Codnex here with a very well-timed gank, making sure this Renekton gets delayed, won't get to his strong part in the early game, just simply shut it down, and Kevin can pick up a lot of farm this bot lane, and then outscale Wicked. We saw Kevin actually going for the Doran shield start as well, which has definitely offered him a little bit more as Kerb dives in. And of course, LeBlanc also had that slight change in 4.10 as the stun goes down. Kerb maybe in a little bit of trouble from this one. Shuck trying to get in there, and Kerb able to walk away. Flash already burnt for him, though. And it was actually a very big change for LeBlanc, especially in the laning phase. And Kerb has, has some trouble in here. I mean, Froggen is playing very confident, even if we saw the flash start from Kerb because he needed to sustain himself. So TF at the moment really working out for Froggen here and looking very strong in the lane. Oh, this could be bad news for them though. That's a level three nip and they're going to dive straight in onto him. Kevin there with a lot of damage, but they forced the flash away. The ignite ticking down, but that's not going to be enough to actually finish them off. Jerry did flash there as well. Kevin decided not to go too aggressive and use his flash to try and get the first blood. So let's see here, no flash on Froggen, still has Ghost. We can see Kerb go in, trying to land a chain, but Froggen is in a pretty good position. He's very close to his own tower. We'll be able to just get back to safety in case Codnex goes aggressive. And there's also Pink Ward spotting him out. Check the bush, please. Nope. Nope. Not gonna check that one. Always do it in solo queue, guys. Always. There's often a Pink Ward. And Cottonex may look to come around the back of Wicked, not know, uh, knowing that he's got no flash. However, Creatine at half HP. Might take him a while to actually get that wave in a position where they can go safely underneath this turret. And we saw it in that last fight. You know, the, the old LeBlanc would have got the silence down, would have stopped Froggen from pulling out that gold card and getting the stuns in there. Not quite the same anymore with silence gone as Cottonex again comes towards this top lane. But Wicked, you can see, not really wanting to go too far out. Still no flash here. However, there's no stun on the side of Lucian or Evelyn, so Wicked can always position himself so he gets the double dash. Just one step towards Evelyn, dash through the first time, and then second dash away. Therefore, he should be able to get away. However, he's getting denied a lot of farm, while Kevin, again, is farming with Tyrion in his bottom lane. Keeping completely out of things there is Creatin, who's got a slight lead over his opposite number, Tabs. He's obviously up against the Jax and Leona combo down on this bottom side. Shuck did also come to this bottom lane, but Millennium have already backed away and have started the recall. First one of the game for them going back to base. And we also actually saw Kevin start Doran Shield simply because Doran's blade has been changed. Instead of giving 5 HP per hit now, it gives 3% lifesteal, which means early game, especially for melee bruisers, it's a lot less. I mean, they need 167 attack damage before they actually get 5 HP back if you just ignore armor and everything. Therefore, it takes a lot of time for the Dawn's Blade to be better for these melee bruisers compared to before. Of course, for, uh, for, their, for their AD carries, it's a bit different because they will get less HP back anyway from, from the Dawn's Blade. So, things staying relatively quiet in this one. The focus of Millennium definitely been on this top lane there with Cotton X coming in a couple of times, getting the flash out of Wicked, which is, by the way, still not up for them. And Kevin has now moved towards that top lane. We're going to actually see Lucian Creaton coming down towards the bottom side of the map, and they'll be go up, up against the duo of Tabs and Nif. So once we get in there, we'll see how that works. Nif, uh, sorry, Tabs himself has over 10 CS lead here. However, not picked up a second item just yet. Creaton's come back into the lane with a BF sword, and obviously that's not the kind of uh, items you want to be facing. Huh, so Creaton actually not building Blade of the Rune King. We'll be going towards Infinitage and instead we should expect. He did pick up a lot of farm mob in his lane by himself and therefore he felt he could go BF into Infinitage and maybe get it a bit earlier. Didn't have to rely on having to pick up a lot of farm or delaying it by too much, but a little bit surprised he doesn't go Blade of the Rune King. I really think it's the best option on Lucian at the moment. Reckless after the last game said it as well, you're so strong with Blade and Ghost Blade. So, blue buffs coming back up in this one. And we'll see Kerb getting the 
first one in the game. Other side of the field, Froggen will also take his blue. Both of them coming back into lane. Actually, needlessly large rod was the first item coming out of Curb. DFG. Which codex for Froggen. So you're going to see Curb with the DFG. Going aggressive again. Going in, just doing a bit of damage to Froggen. Backing away, he needs to just farm up here. But he's going to go for the DFG and simply try and focus on assassinating people left and right. If he can spot a target out with Jiri and Leona, it's actually the same thing they did against Fnatic last week, where you had Leona on Jiri, and then you had Kerb on LeBlanc here, and just full focus on killing the first target Jiri managed to lock down with his CC. So look at this then. We've got level 6 Cotton X ultimate ready. Headed down towards the bottom lane with Tabs and Nif. And there is the reveal. They're going to go actually over towards Nif, but he's close to the turret here. Will they be able to lock him on? Under the tower. Carnex is actually going to go low. Finished off by the gold card. And now Froggen and Tabs going to focus towards Creatine. Have they got the damage? Solar Flare comes down. They do manage to get themselves the second. Can they have the third as well? They will now with a bread triple of kill. Job. It's a triple kill for Froggen. And that just going to show how big of an impact that Destiny can have on the game. And that makes things a lot harder now for Millennium. And it was such an aggressive play by Millennium first. They actually went for the dive. Even though Jiri wasn't level 6 when the fight actually started. So he couldn't lock down Nif. He still has Flash, by the way. He died without using the Flash because he didn't feel like he had to in the end. He was dead anyhow. But he just bought so much time for Alliance to come down with this Twisted Fate here. Remember, LeBanc can't stop the Twisted Fate anymore because she can't silence him. Must be bad news moving on. And Froggen coming back into the lane with that Morellonomicon. Sorcerer's Shoes and a couple of Doran's uh, rings as well. As here is Wicked going low in that top lane to Kevin again. Deciding not to use his flash. Wicked did have a flash available as well. So probably would have been safe from that one. And Kevin just playing the safety game. Force Wicked to back off out of the lane. And do some good damage on towards his throat. But you see he's just staying off Renekton. Back up to half HP almost already. And this is the point now where teleport, the changes is a big deal because normally you saw top laners, they would delay the back till the teleport was ready, go back to base, buy and just teleport back to late instantly. But because it's 40, se 40 seconds longer, it's harder to do it. So now with Wicked being low, oh, Kerb and Frog actually trading some damage here. But now with Wicked being fairly low, now of course he sustained a lot of it back. He wasn't able to just go back to base, get some items and come back in lane. He needs to wait. That trade once again showing without the silence, the gold card comes out and Froggen was able to do a lot of damage onto Kerp, actually forcing his passive to come out. That's going to mean that Kerp needs to be real careful in this middle lane. Or will they throw everything that they've got here at Froggen? We saw Cotton X coming around, no ultimate for him just yet after he used it in that last fight down on the bottom side of the map. Looks like he will actually just be backing away, going back into farm. And we need to see if Millennium actually want to put in some deep wards around this mid lane to try and spot Froggen out to see if he's moving to, either to the top lane or towards the bottom lane here. Because for now, he can actually move fairly safe. No, there's actually a ward from Millennium spotting him here. So there was a well placed ward, seeing Froggen run to the Wraith Camp and also move towards his bottom lane to try and set up a gank, or in case he wanted to set up a gank, because there's no bot lane tower after the lane swap here. So they definitely need these deep wards. Had a one already. Full credit to Millennium. Well, they force them away. Dragon is available for the taking. And there is a ward there actually for Millennium, so they're going to see that Alliance have started this one off. Will they be able to get there in time and finish off the Dragon or stop them doing the Dragon? Bubble's going to come out. They lock up Jerry with that. Cocoon will follow straight after us as well. It's a lot of damage. Jerry actually following it in. That's going to be the first kill to Alliance. But Shug taking damage from left and right here. Chris oh, is going to go aggressive. One versus three. Connix really nice. In. He can come back in onto it, but they turn it back around. Tab gets another one. Can he finish off Creatine? He's got his ultimate available. I don't think he had quite enough mana to actually finish it, though. Oh, Kerb is waiting around, oh. he's jumping in, backing out. <laughs> Still though, he actually managed to kill Froggen by himself one-on-one -on -one here, while the rest of Millennium were fighting. Kerb is being a little bit annoying here. Could actually set up something for Kerb, he's still around here. Shook is very low. There is the scan coming through, they've not seen him up until now. There is Kerb going in, and he uses his ultimate on towards Shook. Can he kill, kill his red buff yeah, as well. He's got no mana here to get wow. away. Creatine gets that one, and Kerb round the back of that dragon pit. Showing Alliance that they can't just back away. Creatin stopping the recalls coming in. Good defense on the Dragon. We actually see the one on one here. Froggen popped his ulti. I think he's looking at the fight at this point. So Kirby's just staying around. He gets in. There's no that's Ward. Kirby instantly just jumps him. And we can, we'll actually pick up the kill in the very end. Use the chain. Gets a kill. Meanwhile, they're losing the fight over here. But it doesn't matter because Kirby's still alive. He's just staying, waiting around. Creatin stopped the recall. 
Two more kills for Millennium. So that leaves us at 5-4, still in favor of Alliance in the kills and the gold. And look at this, Carnex coming around the back, trying to get in onto Wicked. Flash is available for Wicked. Kevin gonna dive in there. Was a little bit late on the Counter-Strike though, and that allows Wicked to get out without burning the Flash. And now Teleport is ready for both top laners here, so they can look to just farm up, go back to base, and then Teleport to join in here. We need to see if Wicked wants to build a Blade of Rune King on Renekton, like we saw Youngbok doing the last game, or if he has something else in mind. So with the Blade, he's going to be very strong in the one-on-ones here, and should be able to duel against Kevin for some time, at least, until we get the real late game point of Jax. So I've down 80 carry items here, because you see that the Infinity Edge was done as the first item for Kreaton, yeah. so going definitely different to what we saw uh, Reckless doing earlier on. Other side for Tabs, he's not got the money. I think he's sat around 500 gold, uh, 600 gold at this point. So definitely not quite as strong as Creaton's going to be, especially when you factor in those double auto attacks. So again, I'm not sure if Creaton decides to build Infinity Edge because he had a good start farming in the lane and he felt he doesn't have to delay his power spikes for such a long time. He can easily get enough gold for Infinity Edge and Phantom Dance or Static Shift or whatever he decides to build next and therefore be relevant, don't have to be taking too much time on building up, he definitely could go for it early. I'm not sure, we need to see what his next item will be, at least for Caitlyn, it should be Static Shift or Phantom Dancer. So, here is Destiny Pop once again, gonna go this time on towards Kevin in the top lane, Wicked got his ultimate running underneath the towers, a lot of damage, Kevin actually oh, will get right. away, will he finish him off? No he won't, Kevin surviving with almost zero health, and there is Kurt diving in with the DFG, stunned up though by Froggen once again. Very nice done by Frog and spotting Curb coming in, instantly picks the gold card and stops him from actually killing Wicked. Codnex though, decides to back away here. They can push in the mid lane at least, where Shook, by himself, is actually pushing the entire way. We actually see that Kevin has used his teleport to come into this middle turret. Are they going to go for Dragon? It certainly looks like they're going to be closing onto it. Shook also an option. Good Cocoon at max range, but Millennium starting off that Dragon. Shook's going to have to steal. So because Froggen stayed up in his top lane, didn't have his ult because he had to use it for the gank, Millennium just went straight towards the Dragon, knew there could only be maximum of four members from Alliance. Wicked would have to teleport in. So smart play, get a Dragon here, we'll lose the top tower for it, however. Have enough damage to pick that one up with Kevin coming too late up towards that top lane. So the exchange of the dragon and the towers between these two teams will leave Alliance still about 3,000 gold in the lead in this game. So despite losing out on a couple of kills, we probably will be hoping that, well, obviously they will hope to finish off Kevin, but probably should have finished off Kevin in that meantime. One more auto attack from anyone would have done that one. It's how it goes sometimes. 5-4, still got a lead in, in uh, kills and turrets, and of course the gold as well. So we talked about this scenario here earlier, where Taps would go mid lane fairly early and just sit and farm for as long as possible until you feel like he has enough items to really start carrying the game. And then you move Wicked around to split push, and Froggen can do the same thing once his ulti is ready, which, is in, which, is in, which it is now, it's very hard. Still, they want to get this mid tower first, and it was fairly low. Yeah, fairly low, easy to finish off, but will they stop, actually? They may be forced to. Millennium have brought the jungler and support to this mid lane to make sure that they can't keep going on that one. However, they've already pushed the bottom lane up there as well. An alliance going to move around to that one, are they? Actually, no. They're just getting in some deep wards on that bottom side of the jungle. and looks like they will be recalling home. Meanwhile, Wicked TP up towards the top lane. So TPing top here, Kevin's is actually down to about 50% cooldown wise, so he will be. His TP will be up before we can see him. Maybe try and set up a play with Millennium. For now, both of them are just once again farming away, building towards the late game points. And Wicked with the Sunfire, Kevin going straight towards his Trinity Force. Another couple of items as well in different positions. Froggen finishing off his Zonya's Hourglass. Had during that last uh, bit of an encounter in the top lane, had his Seeker's arm guard for that one, but now he's got that Zonya. It's going to give him a bit more survivability, especially against the DFG on Kurt. Yeah, also against Leona, who wants to target you in the team fights again. Millennium, last week against Fnatic, he was ex Peck on Syndra. He was the target every single time. He didn't build a Banshee, he didn't build an Outlast, and therefore they could kill him every single team fight. Froggen, playing it a lot more safe. I know he's going to be one of the targets for them, so he, early Outlast. And again, it makes perfect sense. Carnex did start to come up towards top. Wicked Flash currently down, as is Kevin's though. 
see if Cotton X can actually get in there. Struggled a little bit to lock down Wicked despite having his flash down from a very early stage in the game. And Wicked is playing this one very safe. Every single time that Kevin starts to move out a little bit, Wicked will drop back to more towards that turret range. Yeah, so Millennium would have to actually tower dive him if they want to kill him, but then Frog can always join him with his ulti very fast. It becomes very risky for Millennium to do it. Unless, of course, it's Kerb who just instantly blow his, blows him up and then backs away. For now, though, I think Millennium are happy just leaving Kevin to farm as much as possible. And Alliance seems to be happy as well, just having Wicked farm. And Wicked is ahead on that front. 150 to 134 of Kevin. As you mentioned, Trinity Force will be the first big item coming out of Kevin. Sunfire already done on the side of Wicked. And the team's actually starting to gather up a little bit in this middle lane. They're going to go for time. Actually, DFG was used on Nif there, who was burnt down to less than half health, but no kill for Kerb. So the man actually stun tap, so he couldn't do anything in the fight, but Kurt was so far away from him, he had to just take it closer target. It was Nif, Flash was used. Once again though, we do see again the comp from Millennium. They're really looking to set up some picks with Leona and with LeBlanc. And they get them though. <laughs> that's that's the a thing. question. That's the thing with this team, and we've seen it from Millennium before, that they've done well when they start snowballing things out. I mean, Kurt's in a prime position really, he's 2 0 one with that LeBlanc. Going to get himself here another blue buff in preparation for Dragon, which is coming up in just under two minutes' time as well. And such an early game build from Curb going now for early magic resistance with, oh, sorry, early magic penetration with your DFG. She's so just looking to blow up targets here in the early game. If he can get a few kills, he can really get rolling, like we saw against Fnatic, and he will be able to carry the game. But Alliance, 4,000 gold ahead, just been putting a lot of focus on taking down towers. It's been working for them. Well, that's been typical Alliance style. If we remember back to the start of the Copenhagen Wolves game last week, actually expected uh, after about 10, 15 minutes, it looked like it was going to be quite a one-sided affair for Alliance doing great moves around the map and taking out objectives. But the fact is that they started to lose kills, and that could certainly happen here again in this game. We'll have to see, though. Jax, by the way, has now finished that Trinity Fall, so more power for him. As Kurt's going to dive in towards Nick once again. The chains will uh, surely be enough. The Ignite is ticking in, him. and Kurt will get that one. Puts him on the killing spree. So he set everything up early here where he forced the flash away, and then he just waited in this Dragon Pit. As soon as he spotted Nick, easy kill for him. Still 45 seconds on the Dragon, so Nick should be able to come in and join for the fight. Millennium won't be able to get an objective for it. Oh. On his bot lane. oh, that is dangerous news here. Frog and actually gonna run with the ghost. Pops a destiny as well. Gold card oh, will actually land down good. to the backside. Kurt, though, I think may go down. He dives in. Frog is gonna fall. Kevin CP saving Kurt and Frog and, and our cameraman completely confused by that one. Alliance do manage to take out Creelton in the mid lane now. Wow, Kurt. Just wow. I mean, that was insane. He jumps over there as soon as Frog and throws the gold card, he just jumps back to his original place, therefore the, the Q from Froggen missed him and he ended up dying for it. I mean, just look here again. Froggen gets a good start, there's a lot of damage on the curb, pops the ghost as well, teleport coming in from Kevin, here's the trick then. As soon as the gold card is in the air, he pops back and the Q missed from Froggen. He was just expecting to stun him, land the Q, kill him, instead everything gets turned around here. Wow. It's coming down as well as stun, of course, from Kevin really helping them out on that one. Dragon did go down to Alliance while we were having another look at that one. So despite that amazing move from Kerb and now 3-0-2 for him, it's Alliance that still hold a healthy gold lead. Kevin's actually just taken the first turret of Millennium's game down on this bottom side of the map. So they're going to need a couple more of them to start leveling things up, but if Kerb continues to play at this level, it could still be a tricky game for Alliance. Yeah, and he's waiting around the same position he really used last week on a bunk, where he just puts a ward in the middle of the lane, and he just waits for someone to walk up and try and farm. It can be taps, it can be nip, it can even be frogging, and then he just jumps them around the corner where the, when there's no wards, and trying to pick up a kill, or at least force them to go back, and then Millennium can try and set something else up on the map. He's in the hall, he's very early there from Tabs, just trying to get a bit of damage back and stop Kurt from feeling so confident there in that middle lane. Blasting one has been added in for Kurt, by the way, so a bit more damage to be thrown out after that DFG. Alliance looking to not get split up here, I think, is the name of the game. You can see three of them already in position. Frog are going oh. through, and it's a lot of damage, but not enough to finish off the kill. Didn't actually manage to proc his last Q here, his ulti Q onto Frog, which probably would have killed him. 
but the chain missed. Therefore, Froggen stays alive, but is now forced to go back to base. And Kerb, once again, really just looking for targets. And that's also why we see this early game build from him and being so aggressive. Because both AD carries have so far been non-factors because they're just farming up. They've built in Thin Tietchan, want to farm, want to get to the late game. I mean, Taps, he's been in the mid lane for the last 10 minutes, just farming. And he's farming up now to 214 TS, still 20 behind that of his opposite number, Creatin, who's also moving towards a Trinity Force as his sex, uh, second item. Let's have two out of three uh, bits of that one. Very expensive build here from Creatin, really using the fact that Kerb put so much pressure on the map here early on, so he has time to build up, otherwise he could really have been punished for this build. That's also not just going to allow him to go that way, but Kevin as well on Jax going to be taking Blade of the Ruin King as his second item to that Trinity Force. I can see that neither team, or specifically Alliance, wanting or needing really to stay together at this stage. They've got a lot of wards down at the at least at the halfway point or a little bit further in than that. And they're not going to take any risks, I think, from this one now. Of course, Millennium are happy to just go in late game. I mean, you have Jax. Lucian as well, good late, late game AD carry. LeBlanc as a pick as well, very strong late game alliance though. It's not like they have a bad late game comp, it's only Renekton who's going to get outscaled. But if he builds a blade, he actually becomes fairly strong even in the late game. And therefore alliance should be able to fight in the late game. It's just a big deal if Kevin becomes so strong that Wicked basically won't be able to hold him. And alliance, let's not forget, do have the lead in this game. However, Millennium is starting to put more and more pressure, forcing Alliance into a bit more defensive play. We can see the gold there, those top laners, look how close that is. 8,050 to 8,020. I'm going to show you how uh, close that one really is overall. Will Wicked be able to keep it close? And how defensive is Kevin going to be? We heard in the pregame video as Destiny's going to get popped. They're going in towards Kevin on the top side of the map. Go's going to be used, but Kevin running away from this one. But there oh. is Nami. There is a stun coming in. And Kevin, is he going to be able to get away from it? Gold card comes through. That pretty much seals the deal. And it's Froggen that picks up the kill. And we really see the reason for the ghost on Froggen here. He comes in in a bit of a bad position, pops the ghost, able to just chase after Kevin, lands the stun and can just keep chasing, picks up the kill. It's a very nice gank, and getting a very important kill, and delaying or shutting down Kevin a little bit at least. Slowing him down, that's for sure. We're going to see the solo player coming in, really only landing onto Wicked, but it's enough to get blown up in the end. And that will be a pick back here for Millennium, and again, J Ryu was so impressive with Leona last week, picking up another one. Dude, again, he's just very aggressive. As soon as you see a chance, he just pops the ult, Goes in for the kill here, Wicked. He's full armor, not a single magic resist item there. So Kerb went for him, used everything, and he went down. Went down to Kirby's third kill of the game. Got three assists as well, and he's yet to die. You see also that Creatin has finished off that Trinity Force now, so he's going to be feeling very confident come the next fight. Also, just seen a Mikhail's picked up by Nip. Obviously, some changes to that item as well. Has it been quite a decent amount more expen uh, expensive? Yeah, it costs a lot more, but you do get 10% cool land reduction from it now. Still, most support players would say the change was not good for the supports. It was actually a nerf to support in general because you don't have too much gold. And the 10% cooldown reduction is not worth the extra 800 gold that Mikhail's is, is worth or cost now, according to the supports here in Europe at least we've been talking to. Still, Mikhail's is a good item and you need it, especially against the likes of Leona because of the CC. And therefore, we have a, been picked up by Nif. Seeing how that helps them moving in. I mean, as you said, it was wicked that they focused on in the last one. He's supposed to be the tankiest man building, completely tanky with Randuins and the Sunfire, but that's all armor, and Kerb is able to get through that. As we see, Dragon up in 30 seconds already. Ward clearing has started. Alliance going to get the better of that one. Both top laners do have their teleports available, so look out for that one as Kerb just going to dive in there. Not going all out, though, onto Shook. And with blue buff on Kerb, he can really keep doing this. It could be the issue for him. When he doesn't have a blue buff, he has very low amount of mana region at this point. So if he goes in too often to try and make one of these picks here, has to jump back. He goes out of mana fairly fast. So with blue buff, he can keep doing it around his dragon here. So good timing for Millennium. So Lance is ahead. And we've seen the straight up team fights here with also now an extra BF sword onto taps. He can really start becoming an impact. So Millennium moving with four towards the dragon. 
You can see that Kevin is actually backed away from the lane on the top side of the map, so that means he'll be safe to actually teleport in, and I think they've given this one up. Yeah, Millennium are going to get the Dragon for free. What are Alliance planning on? They've got Tabs who's moved away. They're going to try and lock up Kevin from this one. He will actually have that Counter-Strike running. A lot of damage coming his way. Leap Strike's off to the minions, though, and they get the Dragon without a reply. Nice but will it stay on a no reply? Kerb going to get bubbled up. Have they got the damage to finish him off? No, they don't. Kerb just able to distortion away from that one. Torrick was picked up, though, by Alliance on the top side. But now Cartonex is chasing as well. That won't last long, though. No, so they're actually trading Dragon for the top tower here for Alliance. Look, again, they're looking more for the taking down towers here, setting up split pushing and going for straight up team fights against Millennium at this point. And I wonder actually what taps with this BF Sword, if he's going to build the Blood Firster. I mean, it could work against LeBronke because the shield you get, as long as you manage to hit a target when you're on full HP, the shield could save him potentially in the fights. Or if he wants to build the Scimitar, which is the upgrade to uh, Quicksilver Sash, which has been uh, buffed in this patch here, and most AD carries actually really like it now. We'll see about that in a few minutes once he gets a little bit more gold in him. Alliance running a mock in the Millennium Jungle, getting some nice deep vision down. Of course, the Dragon was already taken by Millennium before that last encounter, and the gold still sits in Alliance's favor. Let's see how that one all works out for them. And Kurt, hey, was he sat on a lot of gold? No, he wasn't. He finished off his death cap there on his last trip home. So, death cap, DFG, haunting guys with three items. Other side, Froggen also has a death cap on top of his Morel and Omicron, and that Zonya's Hourglass. Also seeing up in the top side of things, Kevin's going to be delaying his Blade of the Ruin King here for a little bit more defense. Pretty smart though, because Froggen keeps going up towards him and trying to kill him every single time possible. So, if Needs the early magic resist here to try and survive the gang and just keep farming, keep farming, keep farming. Get to your late game point with Jax and you're gonna be all fine. Wicked just basically changing up the way you normally see Renekton with a lot of early game uh, pressure, early game power. There was of course the lane swap coming in and just saying I'm gonna go full tank now because I don't feel like I can one on one you anyway. So I might as well be very good in team fights and therefore be very strong or be very tanky. And then also buy time for Froggen to come up in case we want to gank you 2v1 up in the top lane. Some magic in there as well much now. Needed. Yeah, much needed. We saw it in that last fight where Jerry was able to lock them up. Ooh, that was really close. Wild cards coming through. Didn't quite have the damage for Froggen to steal that one away, though. Goes over to Kerb in the end. He's now level 16. We'll see if he can catch any more out. But Alliance just keeping on with this tradition that yeah. they've gone with now, sitting with three men in the mid lane, trying to make sure that neither of them gets caught out. Doing the exact same thing again. Wicked in one lane. Frogging in a different lane and taps as the main wave clear in this mid lane on Caitlyn, just standing there, wave playing again and again and again. So while he's not even in the game when it comes to these fights, he does a lot of uh, wave playing and he makes sure that lines can split push and set up kills because he's standing in his mid lane and always farming. And then we're getting more items soon as Frogging. What is he waiting for? Down on the bottom side of River, he does have Destiny available. Had already pushed the wave quite far up. In fact, he's on the inner turret of Millennium. There's going to be an ace in the hole again. Tabs not being scared to use that one and thrown it at Kerb pretty much every time it's off cooldown. And then he's got Vision. They are going to be seeing Kerb recalling. Jax is recalling as well. What are Alliance going to do with that information? Nothing. Now, nothing. Taps wants to go back to base. Again, it's good for him because it gives him some time where he can actually go back. He doesn't have to be in a mid lane wave clearing. Just keep defending this mid tower over and over. And we do actually see he picks up the Scimitar. There's been a new go to magic resist item for AD carries instead of the Banshee because it's so strong now. I mean, you get you get 80 attack damage, been buffed by 20. And the, main, or the big thing is the movement speed buff you get when you use it, when you use the cleanse. Now works on ranged as well. So you have heal and you have now your Scimitar. To speed yourself up makes it very hard for people to actually catch you in team fights, especially like a Jax. And when you want to get away from J. Re, just adds an extra yeah, little true. element into that one to cleanse off that crowd control. Is Destiny going to be popped here? Will they follow through anywhere? It was a case of check out exactly where Millennium are. They've got no wards that I can actually see over by Baron and Millennium. were all hidden on that top side of the river. They weren't actually going for anything though, but that also meant that Alliance didn't have to move too close in towards that brush and risk getting themselves blown up by uh, Kerp, who will once again take himself an ace in the hole to the face. And Froggen clearly didn't feel confident enough staying bot lane even though the wave was pushed all the way up to the tower for quite a while now. He could have done a lot of damage to it actually, but decided to run mid lane, stay with the team, didn't want to risk Kerb would jump him or 
whoever, maybe Lucian would jump in and win the fight here. So therefore he stayed with the team in the mid lane instead of taking the tower. And now they're just moving. Could trade mid tower for top tower here, but then Alliance can just push on to the inhibitor. So Millennium need to react and come back and defend. Well, they are moving back as well, going through the jungle, which was already warded out. So Alliance see that chase coming in. Well, look at this, they've backed off. They're going to let Millennium walk back over to middle again. And then they move in for another couple of hits on towards the tower. Jerry's actually stepping forward here. Well, they go for the fight. Good cocoon from Shuck, though. Look at the Alliance to walk away. Yeah, they've got Kevin in the mid lane now. I don't Game think the this turret's going to be safe. No, it's not. Look at the damage coming out. Yeah, so Alliance have been defending this tower for such a long time. But as soon as they move taps away from this mid lane, Kevin just walked from his top lane down. Wicked was a bit slow to react, took down the mid tower with all other members being his bot lane, just holding off each other here. Jerry was looking for the engage, started to back away also because he can't really engage onto taps any longer because of the scimitar. So, 10 seconds for Dragon Millennium, uh, Millennium and all recalled after Kevin managed to get that turret. So they should be in position here to stop Alliance going straight in for that one. Alliance themselves have all five men on that area of the map. Once again, as the ace in the hole, this time thrown towards Jerry. Good ward control here as well. We see those sweeping lenses coming in very, very handy for Alliance. For Millennium throwing the walls over the wall here. Gonna try and stop this one as Connex comes in. Good tidal wave comes across. Who are they going for? It's Nip that's focused down. It's Creason that gets that kill. Kevin having to jump away. He fell pretty low. Wicked down to less than half HP as well. But I think Alliance have got enough damage nice, here. Gonna sir. go now towards Karnak. Froggen comes in. Who's he going for? He actually put the DFG down on towards Kerb, but Kerb got away from it. And everyone from Millennium there, super low as Tap goes in. Will he go any deeper? He's got no flash. Will he use the heal to actually get in range? No, he won't. No need to go too greedy on that one because they got the kill. They can go back to Dragon. In fact, they already have gone back to Dragon, and that will go their way. Or will Kerb be a hero and oh. steal that one? Good Sonyas from Froggen. Stops it from going down, and it is Alliance that pick up Dragon. So Alliance at first, they actually lose Nif, but they keep just kiting backwards, keep kiting backwards, and then we see the flash coming in from Shook, trying to set up the kill. We're actually going to see it again here. Nif is going to be the first target for Millennium, because he simply gets locked down, and there's nothing he can do to get out here. But the rest of Alliance, they're just backing away, surviving the upfront or the first or engage from Millennium at first, and then they feel confident of, now we can re-engage here. Come in, and Froggen actually used the DFG onto Kerb, even though he stuns Creson and misses the Q afterwards, so didn't manage to kill him. Still though, taps on this Caitlyn here. The more time he gets, the stronger he becomes. And we see in this fight, he completely untouched in the back line. Goes in, picks up a kill, and also the Dragon now. Again, headshotting the auto attack there, really doing a ton of damage. And it leaves Alliance with another Dragon in their pocket. Still level on kills, oh, now level on kills at eight apiece, but still it's Alliance that hold on to Good gold lead. Five and a half thousand pretty much at this stage of the game. Taking their time about finishing things off, but Alliance are a team that, well, you know, at this level of play, it doesn't matter how flashy you are in no. winning games. You've got to do things, you've got to do it right, otherwise, of course, it's going to cost you matches. And playing safe could bring Alliance to an 11 2 record in the league. And they couldn't really play it any more aggressive early on because they needed Kate into get to the late game point and one twisted fate to get to the late game point and of course with the early kills on the curb it made it even harder to actually set something up without being blown up by curb here Jerry, he's going in going in onto it but who are they going to go for tidal wave comes across and i think that's the end of that one ace in the hole will fly through creates and actually blocks it and they're going to try and lock up connex down to half hp already for him Wicked moving in, but there's the cocoon, that's surely it. Connex turns it up, puts his ulti down, but they've got enough damage to blow through it. And now Froggen gonna use the destiny. He's going to the top side of the jungle. That's a good counter strike from Kevin to stop them following through. Five versus four with a 50 second spawn time. Can Alliance get Baron? Well, Froggen is very low on mana at this point here. Would be a risky Baron if they decide to start it. Curb, of course, full mana, full HP. They do start it. Let's see if Millennium can stop it. Only the man to try and get in, get one kill for them to make things easier. But look how fast that Baron is going down. There's no Ryan smite, position remember. here, trying to move in. Kevin's going to go for it. Who's going to get it? He's alive to get the Baron. Jerry's going to be picked up for the side. Baron helping them out even further as Creaton will also fall here in a second. Tab picks up the double kill and now they're looking for Kevin. Chasing him down. Cocoon was already used by Shook here, so we won't have that available to him. Kerb is just stalking on the backside. He needs to be real careful about if he goes in for it, but he also needs to loop rack around because they're yep. going to lose towers. And so Alliance here, they feel like they can just stay straight up start the Baron because there's no smite for Millennium. We need to follow Kerb though. He's not done yet. Tabs already know he's behind them. 
Or you stalled on him. Now Cook's like, yeah, never mind. I can't do anything. No, can't do a thing about it. They'd already spotted him coming through. Ace in the hole was put down. And Alliance just carry on up that middle lane and take out the first inhibitor of this match. And now with the Baron on, we can see that goal jumped a massive amount over 10,000 now the lead for alliance as curb trying to get away destiny gonna be used will frog and go for this one he's gonna be getting into range he's pulled the gold card does he want it he does go in there but curb is gonna try and avoid him but he's basically gonna have to execute himself here i'm not sure that he'll be able to uh, sneakily escape or will he go oh, down to the red onto buff, yeah. the bottom side of the map that's pretty much his only oh. chance tidal wave comes through doesn't land curb still trying to get away <laughs> turret hit will go in there i think alliance have given up that chase. Yeah, not really worth it to keep chasing here. Just go back, use all the gold you just earned from winning the fight, from getting the burn and the towers, pick up some very needed items and then be ready for the next fight here. We actually see Blood first on now, four taps. No Last Whisper, simply saying, okay, I have Magic Resist now, I have a Cleanse. Now I have a Blood first, which is going to give me a big shield as long as I hit the minion before the fight even starts or before I take any damage. So if Curb wants to try and kill me, it's going to be very, very hard and taps can just stay in the back. We actually see the same kind of team fights from Alliance, where as soon as the engage comes in from Jiri, everyone backs away. They don't even try and fight early on, they wait for the engage to drop down, they wait for Curb to jump in and do whatever he decides to do, and then they disengage. Use the ulti from Froggen, land a cocoon or something from Shook, go and get a kill, and then move on towards the Baron here, which was very well executed by them. Went down quickly, let him in there, but... Always got to be slightly careful, especially when it's someone like Jackson. Beautiful shield. You up while you're on top of it. And there is that shield of the new Bloodthirst that could definitely come in handy when you've got that little Blanc over on the other side trying to burst you down. What we're going to see because Alliance are moving up now to that inner turret in the bottom lane. The only inner turret that stands actually on the map for Alliance to be taken down. And then Millennium will be left with defending at least what's left of their base. Inhibitor is already gone. I don't think they're even going to put this up a fight on this turret. No. Too low anyway would just be too risky for them to try and defend it. And then as soon as the tower went down, Alliance would engage onto them. One thing with the bot first though, in case people haven't read the patch note or played the game the last few days. After 15 seconds without hitting a minion, the shield will disappear. So he's not there all the time you need to. Land an auto attack first before you take any damage. And then you get the shield. And the destiny is actually Jerry going to get cocooned after the bubble as well. So they land the CC, but no follow through on that. Once he did come out from Tabs, and even onto Jerry, that really does sting. We also saw a couple of Banshees fails coming out. And there is the FG going to Creighton. Not going to get them a kill there, but it forces Millennium to back away. Are they going to go any deeper? Jerry's actually going to come back in. They're going to surely kill off Kevin to the side, who's actually doing good job on towards Shook. Double kill though for Tab onto the mid laner and the support. And that is now bad news for Millennium. Minix spawn timers and Alliance may win the game right here. And again, Tabs in these late game team fights, perfect positioning, just destroying people. He's been farming all game long and it really pays off now. And I don't think they can stop them. It's <laughs> Lucian and Jax to try and stop five men from Alliance. In fact, Tabs going oh, aggressive. Look. They're almost two shot in Creighton. Gonna keep pushing onto it. They won't need the kills though. The Nexus goes down. And Alliance continue their dominance at the top of the table and go 11 wins for two losses. So while Millennium tried to set up some kills in the early mid-game part, Alliance were always a hitting goal because they focused on taking down towers here. The ultis from Froggen were pretty much always used towards Kevin in the top lane here, trying to delay him from farming off, trying to get a kill or two and in the top tower as well. And we just saw the whole tactic from them where you put the two split pushes in each side lane and you just leave your Caitlyn in this mid lane to farm. And as long as she gets enough time to farm up, she will get her items, she will get to the late game team fights. And when you have an AD carry like Taps in late game team fights, yeah. he's just gonna kill everyone. And we see the variance again from Alliance coming in. We talked about it before. They play poke comps, they play pick comps. This one, very much a, a safer composition coming in there. As you said, the way that they played it worked to all the strengths that they had, sticking your weaker players all together in that mid lane so that LeBlanc wasn't just going to come in there, yeah. dive straight on top of you. I mean, credit to Kerp, he made what opportunities were given to him True. work. Ended up 3-1-3 in the end, but once they just five men are all bunched together and they can control you the way that they did, just stepping back each time, kiting you away, and then turning things around once you've got nothing else to offer in the fight. Really well played by uh, Alliance. Yeah, very controlled team fights. Because again, they saw the engage coming in, everything was popped by Millennium, and they, yeah, so we lose one member, who cares? 
turn it around as soon as we feel like all their things aren't cool down and they won't be able to burst us down any longer, and they just win the fight. Go Baron, pick up the Baron. It was only the jungler dead. It was four members still for Millennium with full HP. And then, yet Alliance were like, you know what, we can easily go Baron here. We have full control of the whole thing. Millennium tried to come in and stop it a little bit late. Shook picked up the Baron. They won the team fight again, double kill by Taps, I believe. Again, I think yeah. he picked up a few in this game. 